All right. As uh, most of you know at this point, my name is Eric Schnur. I'm the founder of the Greater Good Gathering, and I'm going to uh, wrap us up for the week here. And we have a special guest who is uh, uh, our, our star social entrepreneur <laughs> of the year. Uh, we have one of these every year. It's not that special. And, uh, I'm touched. I'm touched. Uh, as, as you might be able to guess, Kyle and I have known each other for a long time, longer than we'd like to admit. We first met working together at the national headquarters of the 1984 Walter Mondale presidential campaign. Uh, I was 12. I just want to <laughs> say that. Uh, Thank you. We, we were the only electoral votes in Walter Mondale. Uh, <laughs> he's cranking on this, he's getting this much on, too. <laughs> this, is, this is a non-profit, but it, it, I would say it makes a profit, but it's a self-sustaining economic model. This is real important to you know, basically the, the origins of this whole greater good conference, which came out of a discussion that several of us have had about what's the future of making a difference. And I mean, a big part of that is the, the blurring of lines between different categories of organizations we think of as separate today. And in the future, uh, governments are going to have to figure out how their activities can be economically self-sustaining, and that uh, uh, businesses and social ventures aren't going to totally blend into one. But there, there is increasingly a need for businesses to have a, a different bottom line where they're looking at uh, uh, making a, uh, a difference of the ways in which their activities uh, interact with the world. And that a lot of, of uh, doing good, and you know, ultimately, uh, charities have to make money in one way or another, or they cease to exist, no matter how you bring in your money. But figuring out how you can do good while having an economically self-sustaining model mm -hmm. uh, and or an economically self-sustaining model, a business that's actually doing good for the world instead of eating down, uh, is really the, the key issue of what's happening in the public sector, private sector, and the change we will see them in the, the next generation or so. Um, Kyle's organization, First Look, has been, I, I think, remarkably successful in doing that. I want to talk a little bit about what that is. Sure. I, I think, you know, when we started building this econ, what is, it's all nonprofit. First Book is a 501c3. But uh, when we started it, it was, you know, and especially when we really amped up the e-commerce uh, part, which was maybe 18 years ago, 19 years ago, something like that, um, it was not yet fashionable to have a social enterprise, especially one that, uh, you know, that, that the base of the pyramid, the people we were serving were in, in fact paying for the resources they were receiving from us, albeit at a much lower level than they could have ever gotten them at retail. But it's important for a lot of reasons. One is we have tried as a society to provide everything for free and do it, uh, make social ma massive social changes based on the kindness of strangers, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work long term, you know? And secondly, when you've got, when what you're doing is uncovering a brand new market, the publishing industry, you know, they are victims of their own industry design because when you're selling $19 picture books, by definition, you're really only selling to the top 5% on a consistent basis uh, of the economic ladder, right? And so what that means is uh, the people at the bottom, in the bottom third, they are not represented as authors. They're not represented in the content. They're not re their voice is not heard. They are not a market that the publishing industry addresses their product to, right? And so not only is it too high priced, it's also irrelevant in large part to the kids we're trying to serve. So by building a market, you actually lower the price but you also bring that market strength to a group of people who have never had a voice. And so we've been aggressively pushing the industry to increase the diversity of their authors, to increase the kinds of stories they tell, the kinds of family structures they, they show in their books, to the kinds of countries and cultures that are highlighted and, and celebrated, right? And you can't do that if what you're doing is trying to do it all based on contributed books. You've got to bring market strength into the conversation. So for lots of reasons, it's really important that it's designed that way. In addition, yeah, I can keep my lights on, right? Which 
really helpful, I'm just saying. Uh, and that's a good, other than the final point about the lights, it's a good, good segue to the third <laughs> point that I want to make, which, um, which I'm going to bring down a, a first of our students, who's Allison, and we're here. Allison, yeah. um, so w one of the elements that, that interests me, which is one of the more recent additions to your model, is this kind of, um, uh, for lack of a better term, feedback loop. Yep. That is kind of uh, building on what works and input from the field to improve what you're doing in a way that I'd like to see governments doing more of, and they basically don't. So this is really something that you see more in the social enterprise field. Right. Do you want me to say two words about yeah. the uh, two? So we started by surveying our network, this 460,000 members, and listening to them, and they would tell us not only you know, what they thought about what we were already offering, but what the else they needed. I mean, that's how we recognize the need for winter coats, which are now on the site. And so increasingly, a lot of the decisions that we make programmatically are based on the direct feedback from our constituents, from our educators. And now we've actually built that into a research arm that is also giving feedback on health care issues, on um, issues relating to food insecurity and housing. And so it's become a platform for a massive group of people to comment on, you know, the rest of the pressures in their lives, right? Yeah. So the, besides the public policy aspects of this, this kind of customer feedback uh, is becoming a big field in a, a number of areas, particularly important in social venture, and uh, goes by a couple of different names, like human centered design, uh, design thinking. And uh, Allison here is a your first year student, second year student at, here at here at SEPA. Got a working mic. Um, here, just we'll trade. Um, and uh, is uh, enrolled in the uh, social entrepreneurship, social design program, yes. uh, working with Harlem Children's Zone this semester. So um, I wanted you to talk about uh, what got you interested in that and what exactly, for people here who don't know, what, what is human-centered design or design thinking and how is that applicable to, um, uh, to social venture, particularly what you're doing with Harlem Children's Zone. Okay. First, I want you to tell them a little something about you 